here's a sine or cosine function and they tell us it goes through the points negative nine zero so let's go ahead and label those and one zero now I can tell there's some other points it clearly goes through for example the other x-intercepts right there now if I use these three points it looks like it's almost a sine function except I want my sine function one regular period of the sine function starts and ends at zero so that'd be y equals sine x so instead of using this point let's instead use the point six zero so we're going to use these three points and let me go ahead and grab make this marker a little thicker there we go we're going to grab this period right here that way uh, if we grab the original period that it kind of suggested we'd have to do a vertical uh, reflection and we're kind of avoiding that and making this problem a little bit more simple if we use the period here in green let's go ahead and do that now I have a sine function so our function will be a sine uh, we'll go with little a x minus h plus k all right so first of all let's do all the vertical and then we'll do the horizontal you can do either order uh, if I look at the amplitude the amplitude the total amplitude goes up four and down four so this stretch is four times what a normal sine function is it's not vertically reflected so that means a big a is just four stretched four okay how about this shift up and down well I draw a center line to this between the top and the bottom the center line is the x-axis so it's not shifted up or down at all so k equals zero all right so that you probably can get those are the easier ones to get let's now think about the horizontal here we have to measure a period so the period starts at four negative four ends at six so that period is ten so we need to relate a to the period and a equals two pi uh, actually we're going to write it as p equals two pi over a our period is ten and we need to solve for a so we multiply both sides by a 10a equals 2 pi divide both sides by 10 so a is pi over 5. all right so that's a right there the only thing we have left to do is get h h is a horizontal shift now the reason i chose sine uh, without a vertical reflection because this is one period of sine and all I have to do is figure out how is it shifted well if I draw the regular sine regular sine would have started right here at the origin and would have just a really fast sketch would have looked like that so that point moved to here what does it take to move there we have to go left four so h we have to go four to the left so and well let's call this negative four so that means regular h is going to be uh, h is going to be negative four and when we plug it in here it's going to be negative of what it looks like so it's going to look like x well minus a negative four you could write all that out that'll be the inside part of course we can just write as x plus four now if you remember way back to last quarter x plus four this actually is a horizontal shift left for the horizontal so the opposite of what they look like so it looks like plus four well it is plus four but what it actually does is shift left four our plus k is plus zero or you can just skip writing that little a is pi over five 
I'm just filling in the rest to get that. We have sine and then big A we got was four. All right, so that's our g of x function right there. That's how to get all the pieces. We could definitely do this with cosine. Let's go ahead and do this with cosine. So now we know what the sine answer is. If we did it in cosine, I'm gonna switch. I don't recommend doing this. So let me choose a color. We haven't used this blue will work well. So if I'm going to do cosine, I'm going to need to, first of all, grab one period of cosine. So it starts at the top and ends at the top. Now already I have fractions, which I'm not terribly excited about. And this is negative three halves and ooh, eight halves, eight into halves is 16. So that's 17 halves. Of course, you can use negative 1.5 and 8.5. That'll work just as well. So there's the start and the end. Now, of course, the period's 10. Period doesn't change. You can also subtract these two numbers, get that the period is 10. So period will still work. The vertical stretch, same as before, is a shifted uh, vertically a is still going to be 4, or not shifted vertically, stretched vertically by 4, shifted vertically 0, so k still equals 0. Little a is still pi over 5, and we're doing all of this in cosine here. All right, the last thing is a horizontal shift. Clearly, clearly it's different. Now, how does this horizontally shift differently? Well, the original cosine would have, oops, the original cosine would have started right over here. Of course, our cosine moved to the left three halves, so our h is negative three halves. So that's enough information to fill out cosine. I better give this a different name. We'll call it g. We'll call it h of x a cos a x minus h plus k. And just filling in all these values that we got for cosine of pi over five x plus three halves plus zero. I just won't write that. And there's the same function just written with a cosine instead of a sine. What really changed, well, a horizontal shift became much different. And again, if I draw this in orange, I did draw the beginning and ending points in orange, that's the period of cosine that I just graphed. And you can see it's moved left three halves, still has the same vertical stretch of four, period's the same, still 10. So that's where that pi over five comes from. And there's the cosine version.